what you see right here is the sketch of how we want our human Amaterasu Okami doll to look like. Um, the theme is we wanted to try to keep it as close to how the characters in the game itself looked. But since our doll will have a mouth and a nose, which is not really shown in the Okami video game characters, some have noses, some do not, some, but all of them don't seem to have a mouth, yet they talk. But since we're using a Monster High doll, we're going to have to adopt that. So we also wanted to try to keep original themes to the um, Okami wolf character. For example, um, the red and white color theme is still there. Um, we incorporated the symbols and runes all over the Okami wolf character's body onto... The human Amaterasu's robes. Um, we also wanted to do something very elaborate with the headdress. Um, we wanted to do a sun look, but the rays of the sun represents all the 13 brushes of the 13 celestial brush gods. And we wanted to just try to keep it um, in homage to the game as well as a fan art doll theme so this is it in its full glory and if you're wondering what this black stuff is this is just a shadow um, and yes this is going to be a dark haired Okami character I don't know it's um, since I first learned of the Amaterasu Sun Goddess story, um, the first illustrations I saw was when I was a child, way before Okami was ever made. Um, she was always a dark-haired character, so seeing human Okami photos of wolf-like, white-haired female human characters is just, to me, it's more like, and I don't know if I'm going to say the name right, to the anime, the Inuyasha wolf dog character that just I don't know it was more it's more animalistic than humanoid to me um so I wanted to do this dark haired image in tribute not only to the traditional appearance of Amaterasu but I wanted to try to you know give it that classy as well as pay homage to the game look um so let me show you the doll. So here is our doll. She is a Monster High doll. I don't know which doll, which Monster High character she is. Um, I have her wrapped in a basically a towel dress made of tissue secured with tape and a headband secured me also made with tissue paper so secured with tape to protect the hair when we remove the doll makeup. Also, um, there's a lot of people that have complained about new dolls for some reason. I don't understand why, but to avoid censorship on my channel, I made the towel outfit because you never know who would complain. Um, I was going to shrink the head, but I really like how the shape and size of it is. Compared to the photos when I bought this doll, they had uh, photos of it, obviously, and the head looked a little bit bigger, but I like its shape in person. Um, I'm kind of debating if I should really um, remove the makeup off this doll because it's a really good makeup, but it would be too dolly if we tried to adapt so who knows if I find out the name of this doll or if you know what monster high character this doll is I might just get another one just for um um purposes just because I like this face sculpt and the makeup so but I will be keeping the hair I might add extensions to it to make it a little bit longer I don't know 
But um, yeah, this is the doll. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically remove her face makeup and after we after she's cleaned and dry um after her makeup removal we'll give her a couple of layers of the infamous mr super clear and begin our penciling on her new face a nice fresh canvas it took me about 15 to 30 minutes to clean this doll's face off of her from her original makeup and that's because I got the wrong nail polish remover. It didn't have enough strength to it. So it took a long time to get it as clean as it is now. But now we got a blank canvas, so we can get started on the face paint. So before we actually do the face, um, I wanted to go ahead and get most of the costume done. So this is from a recycled um, cloth doll. What we're going to do is we're going to um, paint it with acrylic paint and fingers crossed that um, the pattern doesn't sew through. We may need to do layers. Um, we want to try to keep this red color though, but if it gets glotched, we can always paint over it with a red paint. Um, just finished ironing it. Now, when it was on the original figurine, the kimono sleeve was attached to the actual robe, so it didn't have that traditional drop. So I split it in half, and I just stitched this part here shut, and I left this open because this is where the layers are going to poke out. Um... Let's see, what else do I have to say about this? Um, yeah, that's basically about it. We're going to start on one side, and then when that dries, do a layer or two if we need to, then flip it over and do the other side. But this is the before look, and yeah. Let's begin, shall we? We'll be back with the completed painted over look. So here is our human Amaterasu's costume. Um, for a heads up, this is not the doll that it will be uh, intended for, but the, this is the original doll that the clothes belong to. I just put them back on her as a model. <clears throat> so, um, I covered them with acrylic paint and then after they dried I did a little bit of layer of more acrylic two layers of white and um, two layers of the red and then I used a sharpie to do the design so let me flip her over it's basically plain on the back except for the sleeves um, the only thing that's original of the outfit is the kimono sleeves I turned into a little obi and they have these cute little kind of cl gold cloud designs to them. So I kept those given, you know, to give it some more pattern. So this is the outfit and we're going to get started on the doll. So here we are at the work table. I apologize for my light horse voice. Um, I have a morning cold, which will probably go away later on in the day after I have a hot beverage of tea or um, coffee, it literally depends. Um, we are here to get started on the face, so without further ado, let's begin. And before I do, I want to apologize if um, anything like what happened last time occurs, like the doll video where it popped out. <clears throat> Um, I'm still working with that, so I hope what I can get, what I can show you, what I can bring you today still makes your day and is still um, brings a smile to your face and is still enjoyable. <clears throat> so let's begin. We're going to start with the eye. There we go. 
Now, in the old comic characters, they have, like, these really tiny slanted eyes, kind of squinty, <clears throat> which is kind of cute in a way. It has, like, this, um, reminds me of those masks with the closed eyes in the area where both the eyelids are connected when they're closed. They have that little sliced slant. <clears throat> See, um, I'm going to have to change the angle just a minute. See. Let me look at it. And as I said, we're going to try to keep um, the face style as close to the video game as possible with this Monster High doll. So it's not going to be too lavish. It, in all honesty, it might be just a little simple. Add a little... <clears throat> so now we have the eyes of our materiality. Let's get started on our, on the makeup, shall we? So give me a moment. Let me get the red. So we're going to start with her forehead symbol, which was that, well, forehead rune, which was that kind of leafy teardrop with two points at the end. We got that part done. So next is <clears throat> the slight wing. Give it a kabuki geisha. Type of vibe. We're going to add the runes, but also it will serve as her eyebrows. Ooh, there's a little bit of black with that. won't hurt it. A little bit of black doesn't hurt because we're going to add a little bit of black to accentuate just a tad. Right. 
out. Dry out. <coughs> okay. And I will say one small exaggeration we will add is because since this Monster High has lips and the video game, there's hardly any lips on any of the characters. Since there's lips here, we're going to go ahead and exaggerate the lips, but we're going to just put a little tiny drop of red <clears throat> to maintain like a small face look and kind of like how the geishas would do their makeup. So... We're going to go over this of acrylic real quick, and we will be back. Her face paint is finished. I added um, little white dots for little shines. They're not eyes. They're just little shinies to kind of give a, glo a glossy look to the doll. I will probably be adding a gloss to the eyes. Also, the only thing that's left to do is to color the streak of a Sharpie, color the band black, and as well as the band, color that all black to match the hair. Um, put her clothes on. And then the Sculpty or Primo clay. Um, unfortunately, something happened and... Um, Basically, I ordered it, and they forgot to mention that it wasn't in stock, so I had to order reorder after I got refunded. So, um... <clears throat> oh, the coffee's warmed up. <laughs> I don't know if you hear the ding-dong, but that's my microwave letting me know that the coffee's been heated up. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. We dress her, and then when the clay gets here, we can sculpt her headpiece and shoulder wear, and then pose her, and she'll be completed. Now we're going to begin by um, making the wing piece and the headpiece. So we're going to start with the headpiece, and like I said, it's based on a Heon, um era headdress, and what we're going to do is we've already started with a large pan covered with a um, piece of clay, sharpened out so it's easier to stick into the head. Now we're going to take the sharp ends of these smaller pins and just stick them into the headdress as our armature for um, the headpiece. And we're going to try to stick 13 in to represent the 13 celestial brushes. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do six in the front and six in the back or something along there. As long as we get like a sun ray effect. Well, actually, I take it back. Um, seven in the front or back, and six in the front or back. That way, it's an even 13. Okay, now we're going to take clay and we're going to cover this up and I will be back when that product's 
complete. So the next thing we're going to be doing is making the wing pieces. Um, I've already got started. I've made two balls, well, four balls, and I fused them together. And then these little strips right here will be the wings. So before we go into the wing part, we're going to take our balls and we're going to do little swirly lines. Kind of stretch it out a bit. Pull it apart just a tad. And there we go. We got a little swirl. So we're going to do it to the other one as well. Pull it back just a tad. And there we go. There's a little swirl. Uh, let me pull that down there. Now, it might be just a little bit dirty, but um, we're going to be painting this. So it might be a little blotchy with some other colors, like a little bit of grays and stuff, but that's probably from the Sharpie from earlier. Um, we're going to, um, like I said, paint over it so it won't be noticeable. So we're going to begin with our wings. So we're going to take some of this little oval and then we're going to kind of um, shape it into a, into a little wing. Let's see. Set it upright. And before we bake it, we're going to put it on the doll and shape it in clay, but we won't show you the doll because she's already dressed and we want to save what's left of what we have with the doll for the big reveal. And I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background. Um, somebody has their shower on or they're running water and the pipes are crazy and it's driving Josette crazy, Josette my cat. It's been going on for an hour, and they do this every now and then. They're either washing something that's not themselves, and yeah, but I'm not going to go into any further details except that I apologize if you hear that swishly sound and my poor kitty's annoyance to that sound, and I feel so sad for her, but I can't, I can't, it can't be helped, it can't be helped. Hold on, I'm going to try it on the doll just to see where I want it. And now we have one shoulder piece, so I'm going to do the other one off camera. I'm going to bake the piece, the pieces, I mean, paint them, and then I will show you the final review. And here she is in her full glory, fully finished, her um, celestial brush sunray headdress, her shoulder cloud armor. Um, I went ahead and painted um, the lower part of the wings a slight gold with a light brush off towards one wing to kind of give it the illusion that the wings were flaring out white. Um, She's on a little stand, and it's made to look like she's stepping off of it. Like she's descending down from the heavens to the world of Okami in human form. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it was um, done very carefully as much as we could, as much as that uh, <coughs> blooper. <laughs> It was done um, as best as possible. Um, 
I apologize if there were some things you wanted to see that was not put on this film. Um, still getting used to the whole doll making process and I'm sorry for the delays of um, new videos. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and please like and subscribe um, and we will try to put up more videos ASAP. Until then, stay safe during this COVID-19 situation, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.